Hi, I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins. Uh, welcome to Financial Love Banking. This is where we talk about love, life, money, and everything in between. I'm here with my buddy, partner, and co-host, Ms. S. Tia Brown. How are you doing today, Tia? I'm doing great. How are you today? I'm doing really well. Re- ready for the week. Um, I'm excited. I, I, I'm also excited for Stevie J from Love and, Hi- love and Hip Hop, who's yeah. having his uh, seventh baby. Oh, yeah. Um, well, you know what? I said I was excited for him, but actually I'm not excited for him. I'm actually mortified for those children who right. um, are not getting uh, what they deserve financially. Um, because from what I read, uh, Stevie J is over a million dollars behind in child support. Um, that's a whole lot of money. Kind of. Kind of. Even with VH1 money coming in, um, it, it's a lot of money to be behind. And, you know, uh, when you said the seventh, it's kind of like, woo. Uh, even though I know he has a lot of kids, hearing that number just makes me go, oh, my gosh. We know that he has a young child with one of the uh, VH1 co-stars, Mimi Faust, who infamously had sex tape earlier this year that was released with her new boyfriend. And, you know, when I hear about things like this, I don't think, oh, my gosh. Well, let's say this. First of all, all life is a blessing, so we pray that they have a healthy child, Right. But then I think about Jocelyn Hernandez, who is Stevie Stevie J's alleged wife, because there's been a lot of discrepancy as over whether or not it's a legal marriage. And one of the things that I think Jocelyn had to her advantage was her ability to leave. Right. When you don't have a child with someone, if you ever decide that you want to break up, you can make a clean break. And because this relationship is consistently toxic, meaning that Stevie is manipulative in his behavior condescending at times in his talk, and in general, not someone who is having a healthy self-image or healthy image about women, I would hope that at some point Jocelyn would have been able to leave. Now that you have a child with him, he will always be in your life. And for that reason, I think that it's going to be a challenge. It's not something that's uh, insurmountable, but it's something that if she wants to have a healthy relationship and be a good mom and be a happy woman consistently, not just in little, you know, sprouts here and there, it's going to take a lot of work, and I don't know if they're up for it. What do you think? Um, you know, my, my thought is that, that Stevie J is, um, he, you know, he's a guy that just seems to enjoy creating complicated situations for himself and other people. Uh, but also remember she can't leave him he can't leave her you know and he's the one that seems to enjoy being a rolling rolling stone and moving around and and from woman to woman and baby after baby and all this other stuff right um one of the things that having a child with someone does is it links you to that person financially for life or or at least for the next 18 years mm-hmm. and so um i think that uh, one of the challenges I've seen is when you have these sort of serial impregnators who have one baby after another with, with various women. I mean, really, that that's kind of what it is. Um, mm-hmm. You know, is, is that that when they do finally get to a relationship where they kind of think they want to settle down and have a normal family, they really can't do that because there's little pieces of themselves that have been left in every previous situation. And, and, and that means, you know, when they get married, that person they're marrying is not getting a complete person. You're getting whatever's left over after everybody else gets their little piece. And that that's what I see here, too. Right, And I, and I do think that it's it's not a death sentence. People are able to move forward and change their behavior, but you have to make a concerted effort. And what we've seen over the course of the last two or three seasons of Love and Hip Hop is that both Stevie and Jocelyn tend to flip-flop emotionally uh, on where their stance is in the relationship and how committed they're going to be and, and how, again, how healthy, how supportive they're going to be. And, and to me, that is the thing that makes this a challenge, even more so than just the children. Because you could have someone who said, you know what, I had kids in different households. Now I'm ready to make a change. I want to build a family and stay with my family. But that wasn't evidenced on this show. We saw how Stevie treated Mimi and their child and how he used the child at times as a pawn to control Mimi and to make her feel guilty about not being with him or to gain access to her when she wanted to leave. So I just feel like this is a a sad thing. Well, I I think it's very sad. Um, I think mostly, you know, when I think about, say, financial love making and tying that into this, um, because I don't want to be solely about, you know, entertainment, right? Just talking about what these other strange people are doing with their lives. Um, What I do see is that uh, you know, when you look at the the cultural impact of shows like Love and Hip Hop, um, it, it's 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 a little bit disconcerting be, that that you you do have real people that 
are that are connecting their own relationship choices to what they're seeing on television. Um, I, I and I know this because I, I talked to a young lady that I mentor who's about 22 years old, and we were talking about picking the right man for you, and I gave her an, an analogy of you know how to pick a good man from a bad one, and she said, oh yeah, like when Stevie J did this to Jocelyn, and I'm thinking those are, and I I just had to say those are not good prototypes, those are not good examples. You scratch that out of your head right now because these are not healthy relationships. Absolutely, these are not people that are uh, psychologically healthy, uh, emotionally healthy, physically healthy, or financially healthy. And I say physically healthy, I'm talking about the fact that when you have a guy that is having that many kids with that many women, he's probably having that much unprotected sex, which means that you're talking about STDs being spread, things like that, which can also also affect uh, your long term health. But here's, a, here's and not a, just with his exes. But with lots of people. Exactly, exactly. I mean, think about it. The baby is is the evidence that you had unprotected sex. But most of the time, we, when people have unprotected sex, a baby doesn't come out of that. You have to have sex at the right time, you know, when, when during the ovulation period and stuff like that. So it takes a lot of tries to, to really hit the mark. You can't just get someone pregnant just like that whenever you, you try. I know we, we talked about that, but but really, I mean, biologically speaking, there are certain times of the month where this can, where pregnancy can occur. So, uh, you know, that that's... That's, that's what I see here. The other interesting thing, and this is my last point on this, is, uh, you know, when I look at a guy like Stevie J, I'm thinking to myself, uh, and he's not, he's about my age. We're not that far apart, I think, from what I understand. I just think, what, what kind of man are you? Um, you know, a man is not supposed to uh, get old and leave his children with debt. He's not supposed to um, be one of those guys where, you know, at your funeral, You've got kids that are finding out that they're siblings for the first time. You've got babies, mamas, and girlfriends and stuff all coming together, finding out that they all thought that they were in love with you. You you have maybe a situation where nobody's benefiting financially from your legacy. You're not leaving anybody anything except for a pile of debt. And in many cases, uh, people are, are, are dying and not even having life insurance so mm-hmm. that they can be properly buried. And you compare that and contrast that to a life that is built on excessive and irresponsible materialism. I'm driving the Lamborghini. I look at the house I'm in. Look at the clothes. Look at the Gucci this and all this other, you know, stupid stuff. And it's just, it's just, um, it's dysfunctional. And it's definitely ignorant. Now, now the thing is, though, um, maybe it, it has to be approached with some degree of compassion because maybe he just doesn't realize how, how ignorant this really looks. But at the same time, this is this is not a dumb man. I mean, he made a lot of money in the music industry by, 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 make, right, by making very, very wise business decisions that benefited him. So my question is, at what point are you going to make life and business decisions that benefit your children? It doesn't seem like that's really at the forefront of his thinking. And, what's, and the reason I even point out Stevie J is because we know that there are other people, and not just men, people who think in the same way we're thinking in the here and now nobody's thinking uh when i get old and gray and i'm on my deathbed what kind of legacy am i going to leave uh to the children that i supposedly care about absolutely one of stevie's favorite sayings is that he's the i'm the good guy i'm the good guy i'm a good guy and he's not a bad person but he's making very bad decisions so i completely concur with you when we speak about or think about finances the other thing is Reality TV, you're in reality TV, your livelihood is very short-lived. You've been on Love & Hip Hop for a few seasons. You might get a few seasons out of your own spinoff show. Then what? You have a daughter who we, you know, his youngest daughter was Mimi, who will be about maybe six or seven by then, and then a three-year-old, and you're now scrunching again to create a livelihood for all of these children, a wife, you know, and yourself. So it's really important to think not just here and now, like you said, with the consumerism mentality, but big picture. How can I be there for people and and making good decisions so that way you can be here, not just be there for them, not just now, but in the future? How can I make sure emotionally and financially that all of these people are well taken care of? And I just think in CBJ's situation right now, it seems damn near impossible. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, people... You know, it's funny. I, I think that the difference between making a baby and, and raising a baby, it's like the difference between having a great idea for a business and actually building that business and running that business for 20 years. Those are two totally different things. But you have some people who really think that if I come up with an idea, that's the same as actually executing the idea. So, they're, so same thing sexually. You have some people who love the act of sex uh, because there's the spark there. 
but they don't have any interest in the long-term responsibility that comes with raising a child. It's so crazy because people will always say, I love my kids. I love my kids. Mm. I'll do what I can for my kids. But when you're a parent, it's not just when you can. It's always. It's making a way always. It's not just about, like you said, the conception and popping up. It's about the every day. Yeah, well, well, I mean, you don't love your kids if you're not planning for their future. If you're not making good decisions that are going to help them grow into healthy and productive human beings, um, if you're not doing that, then you don't really love your kids. You really love yourself. You- I would go as far as saying you don't love your kids. But what I am going to say is that you're not making a responsible and fair decision in the way that you're showing your love. You're being selfish. Well, yeah, okay, I, 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 I'll, I'll definitely give you that. But what, what I'll say, too, is that it's almost like... Um, um, you know, if, if someone says, you know, I love, I love my health and they're eating, they're eating the food that they're eating comfort food all day long, ice cream, yeah. cookies, and, and they're, you know, and, and greasy chicken and all these other things that are going to kill them. It's sort of like, well, I mean, do you love yourself? Do you love being healthy or do you, or do you just, do you love the food more than you love your body? Right. And, and I think that maybe, maybe, maybe there is an issue there in terms of, you know, education, family planning, financial literacy. But I think people cannot underestimate the importance of how family planning links to your ability to build wealth. If you're always creating broken families, uh, scattered family situations, um, you're, you're not creating the ability to really build an, a legacy. Uh, if you go to Africa, when I talk to people I know from, from parts of Africa, not everybody, but a lot of my African friends that come from stable family situations, they talk about how the mother, the father, and the kids, that, that structured household is part of building the legacy because then they build wealth, then they pass that wealth that land it, may, it might be land it might be animals it might be money uh, on to their children and each generation builds on the previous one everybody's not just starting over but if everybody's all but if you look at you know what happens in some parts of our community not all um, you, you see people constantly starting over families that are you know, that are chopped up in little pieces kids everywhere and that can be controlled that can be managed we act like it's just impossible to control that but it can be Right? Absolutely. So, so we got to ask ourselves about this dysfunction. It, it, it's not productive for any of us, and it's very, very harmful to those kids. Absolutely. We are on the same page. You know, I, I love it when our conversations end on this note. I'd love to hear what the listeners have to say on this topic. Should Stevie J be having more children? <laughs> no. All right. Well, Tell so- us what you think. Have a good- <laughs> All right. Bye-bye.